stations which almost belong to the same time period. Due to time constraints, I will discuss three main translations of the play, the translations undertaken by Nurettin Sevin, Can Yücel, and Bülent Bozkurt. Nurettin Sevin uh, translated the play first in 1936, which was published by Hilmi Kitabevi with the title Yaz Ortasında Bir Gecelik Rüya. Then he revised his translation and it was published in 1944 in, by Bar Marif Vekili with a different title, Bir Yaz Dönümü Gecesi Rüyası. Uh, the copy used in the study was printed in 1962 and is the reprint of the translation of 1944. Can Yücel translated the play first in 1980s and it was published in 1981 by Aoli Yayın then the translation was reprinted by four different publishing houses in four time, uh, different time periods, as you can see on the screen. The copy used in the study was printed in 2003 and is the reprint of the translation of 1981. Bülent Bozkurt translated the play first in 1988, which was published by Donami Yinçılık. Then he translated the play play in 1992, which was published by Remzi Kitabevi, and uh, there are 14 reprints of the translation, according to the data received from the Turkish National Library. Uh, the copy used in the study was printed in 2002, and is a reprint of the translation of 1992. Uh, in order to reach more concrete solutions, I have chosen five different examples, among many others. Actually, there are many more, but I want to show the first example. Um, in this uh, first example extracted from uh, in Act 1, Scene 1, it gives Prince Lysander, Demetrius, and Hermia to Theseus to beg the ancient privilege of Athens. And it gives wants Hermia to marry Demetrius, and she has refused because she's in love with Lysander. While Seven and Bosch could have literally uh, translated the text and remained source oriented, uh, Yücel has used guitar mitar dökdürmek, meaning to play guitar and modernized and also domesticated the team. Um, as singing at her window song under the moonlight is considered very romantic by the 17th century reader and audience, Yücel probably uh, would create the same effect or wanted to create the same effect Shakespeare created during his time uh, from the thematic point of view. Uh, but maybe he has failed to give the archaic taste in this part. Um, in the second example, Titania and Oberon are having a quarrel, and Titania says to Oberon, uh, these are the forgeries of jealousy. Eugel has added extra sentences in this part in order to stress the jealousy of Oberon, uh, and uh, made Titania say, Freud diye bir yahut doktor var, ona görürsen istersen. <laughs> Eugel's choice, Sigmund Freud, uh, Freud lived between the years 1856 and 1939, more than 200 years after Shakespeare wrote the play, and Eugel adding extra sentence and making an anachronism has followed again domesticating strategy. Uh, moreover, he has changed the middle summer spring into Nevrus, while Boskut and Seven have followed a more source-oriented approach and translated the play part by using literal translation procedure. Um, Nevrus Maybe uh, you know is a composite noun combining nev, which means new, and rus, which means day, and it means new day, and uh, uh, it's a mythological day celebrated as New Year's Day by Turks living in Central Asia or the Anatolian Turks or in Persians, and it is a symbol of nature's lease from winter and the arrival of uh, plentiness and abundance. Again, you just probably uh, think that from the thematic point of view, uh, he changed this uh, part and followed domesticating, domestication. In this example, uh, this example is ex extracted from the Act 3, uh, Scene 2, when Puck is intending to leave the scene very swiftly. Uh, but <laughs> Again, uh, Yücel follows a uh, domesticating strategy and uh, translated it as Fuzuli'nin yayından çıkmış berceste bir beytim. Uh, Fuzuli, who lived until 1556, is one of the most famous and greatest poets of Turkish literature, who has given us the most sensitive examples of lyrical Turkish poetry, Leyla ile Mecnun. And maybe since Fuzuli means a lot to the target reader and audience, such a translation will arouse the audience's feelings. 
uh, in this example. Actually, in these following two examples, Yücel, contrary to other translators, has preferred to add many different extra sentences. Actually, throughout the play, he has added many extra sentences. For example, in the scene, uh, Lysander and Hermia flee to the forest. They get tired and decide to stop walking and rest for a while. And Lysander wants to sleep together. However, Hermia prefers to lie off further. Lysander and Hermia sleep far apart on the ground, as Hermia's sense of propriety has required. And Yujai, willing to emphasize the flirting of young lovers, has added extra dialogues in the scene and presented Lysander as a passionate man who is willing to be with Hermia that night, and Hermia is a coy young girl. He has made Lysander say, uh, say demek istiyorsun ki sen resepsiyondaki siyah sallı katip bizden nüfus soracağına göre ayrı ayrı odalarda kalacağız mecbur. Again, you just translation, uh, choices belong to the modern world. And in this last example, Nujal has added extra dialogues again, and attributed to the American actress Marley Monroe, and the first boarding school for girls in Turkey, Notre Dame de Sion. Um, and however, Marley Monroe lived between 1926 and 1962, and Notre Dame de Sion is a French high school in Istanbul, which was founded in 1856 as the first boarding school for girls. Uh, thus, Yücel has resorted to anachronisms again. In addition, he has made the characters talking about cars and rockets, and he has mocked himself in terms of the anachronisms within the play. As examples are examined, uh, it is seen that while Sevin and Boskurt have preferred a source-oriented translation, Yücel has followed domestication strategy or target-oriented translation. And to the extent that the text he has created uh, with the added and omitted parts, local concepts and anachronisms has become an example to adaptation rather than a translation. <coughs> The reasons for the translators to follow different strategies can be explained by different reasons. These may include the impact of the historical period in which texts have been translated, the contextual factors, and translators' personal choices. And uh, the possibility that translations grow old and need revising may hold true for the translation of Emmet Summer Night's Dream into Turkish. However, the real translation theory suggesting that the first translations are more target-oriented does not hold true for Sevin's translation. Rather, Sevin's translation choices can be explained by the historical context of the time in which he first translated the play, which was important for the Turkish literature and translation activities in Turkey. During the period between uh, 1940s and 1960s, great steps in translation were taken in Turkey. In 1940, translation becomes a state-organized activity thanks to the efforts of Hasan Ali Yücel, who was the Turkish Minister of National Education of the time, and systemic and purposeful translation and publication activities began. Lists of books to be translated were prepared and objectives to be followed in translation were determined by the ministry. Uh, first of all, uh, the Translation Bureau, as explained by Aksoy, aimed at developing a Turkish language right from the daily spoken tongue of Anatolia and to eliminate the Arabic and Persian vocabulary. It also aimed at contributing to the Turkish culture and enriching the Turkish culture with all the concepts of modern Western thought through translated texts. It also aims at filling the cultural gap that existed in the first two decades of the 20th century by means of translational activities in order to shape a cultural identity and that would create awareness of the potential of the Turkish language and an enthusiasm for establishing a literature for our own. Thus, while the classics from different languages were being translated into Turkish, the aim was to enrich the Turkish language and literature by using a new, fluent, and effective Turkish. A series called the World Classics, among which A Midsummer Night's Dream also took place, should be considered as one of the most important moves in the efforts to bring the philosophy of enlightenment of the West into Turkey. In this context, the study of retranslations can thus reveal changing norms and ideologies in society. 
Therefore, we can say that Seven has followed a certain policy while translating the play. However, when the time passed, translation needs also change for Turkey. Thus, the play demanded for different translations. The time span between the time when Yücel has translated the play and the time when Boskurt has translated the play is not long. Thus, we can say that Yücel satisfied one of the demands while Boskurt satisfied the another. Um, you just translation choices, which are closer to the target text rather than the source text, supports the retranslation theory as Bosker's translation, which comes later, is more source text oriented. However, I believe the main reason behind the translator's translation choices is a different context. As Bromley has stated, quote, explanation for what is going on in retranslations may be found not only at the broad social level, but in specific contextual circumstances, which give a significant role to the individual commissioner and translator." Unquote. The translation of Sivin has uh, had dual characteristics. His translation was performed in Istanbul State Theatres in Turkey at different times. Uh, in the prologue, he has stated that while performing the play, he has worked closely with the director and the actors and adapted the acts and scenes. In addition, he has mentioned that the work he translated was included in the list of the classics to be translated in 1944 by the Ministry of Education. Although his translation was being performed, he has added footnotes, probably because of the objectives of the Translation Bureau, which have aimed at filling the cultural gap by means of translation activities. As for Yücel, he has translated for the stage his translation was performed in uh, 1980 and 81 in Istanbul Municipality State Theatres at first, and um, it is still being performed, especially by um, amateur theatre uh, groups or clubs. He has also worked closely with the director and the actors, omitting some scenes and characters and creating modern settings with a view to gaining maximum audience acceptability. He has wished to bring the foreign play under the theatrical home rule in order to appeal more uh, to the contemporary theater goers. On the other hand, Bosker's translation wasn't performed, but published as a part of a series of the plays of Shakespeare and used as a reference book on Shakespeare. In other words, Boskut has translated for the page and presented a book of the play, which will be a source for the ones which want to read and learn Shakespeare. He has also added footnotes, which may uh, create the performability problem if the play is to be performed. Lastly, I believe uh, translators' personal choices are effective in different translation strategies. They have preferred in retranslations um, for example, Seven's extra explanation, I think, reflects her res his respect to the project taken by the Translation Bureau. Uh, as explained above, although his play was performed, he has added uh, footnotes because it is likely that he has regarded his translation as a cultural contribution to the society. On the other hand, Jainja's identity as a poet has given him some kind of authority to the extent that he has domesticated the play. In addition, he was not uh, referred as a translator, but as Türkçe söyleyen, which means the person who utters in Turkish. So he doesn't call himself translator. As for Bozkurt, he has explained his views on the translation strategies. He has preferred, uh, he has preferred while translating different works of many different writers and dramatists, that using the old language in the target text as a counterpart of the old language, using the source text, uh, doesn't solve the problems encountered in translation. And um, Boskurt himself states that at the end, the one finds himself face to face with the sultans and sadrazams who live in Denmark. So uh, we can understand from his quotation that uh, he's not in favor of domestication. And uh, Boskurt might have seen translation as a way of cultural contribution to the target culture. He might have wanted to give the taste of the respective period and the source culture. And as to conclude, all the retranslation hypothesis makes sense in the translation of a Midsummer Night's Dream into Turkish. There are other factors which are needed to explain preferences in retranslations. The impact of the historical period in which texts were translated, the contextual factors, and translators' personal choices are among these reasons. 
Uh, and I believe, considering the different translation processes they have experienced, three of the three translations are acceptable to some extent, since all of them have satisfied one of the demands. Thank you.